All right, hello everybody. This is the this is the second video with regard to the brake pedal assembly or the pedal assembly for the Super Light Coupe, and it's really the first video with regard to mocking up the power brake system for the car. Uh, and what we'll cover in this video is really the approach that I've taken to get power brakes into the Super Light Coupe some of the challenges behind it and then I'll also show you all the parts I've mocked up all the parts or, or machined up all the parts and you'll see the whole power brake uh, pedal assembly done by the end of the video okay so you know what are we looking at well last time last video I showed the flat plywood piece that I used to locate the pedals I further mocked up that piece to make it dimensionally correct to the front foot box, including the extended driver foot box. And the reason I'm doing that is, you know, it just makes it easy to visualize where the pedals go, where the brake booster is going to go. And, you know, I'd rather drill holes in the plywood than drill holes in the chassis. And if they're not correct, you know, then I have a problem. So here I can mock this up as many times as I want. I've actually built uh, this box a couple times already and this is the the final version. Uh, but anyway a couple other things to point out. So you're looking at a vacuum brake assist and also a master cylinder. These are the parts that come off of a fifth generation Camaro and they actually map to the Camaro SS fifth gen calipers that are standard on the Super Light Coupe uh, car. Now a, a Camaro rate weighs I, I think about 36 or 3700 pounds and a super light will be anywhere between you know 2500 and 3000 uh, so you have plenty of braking power for even the heaviest of super light cars. Uh, since I'm making a street car my, my car will probably come in at about 2800 pounds maybe 3000 pounds I'm confident I'll have more than enough braking power for it. Okay, so let's talk about sort of the approach and the challenge and you know really what you have here is this is the pedal assembly and I mentioned there's this balance bar and this balance bar you know one end of it will connect to the front master cylinder and the other side will be the rear master cylinder and the way they they generate brake bias is by spinning this and it, it causes this to offset and then and then it applies a different amount of pressure to the different master cylinders and you know the challenge here is how do you take such a, a low pedal and get it to connect to the actuator rod on the brake booster you know you would think you can simply you know drill a hole in the middle of the pedal line it up to here and you're done the problem is is that the pedal ratio would not be correct and basically the pedals would have too low a ratio and they would be way too touchy and it just wouldn't work well so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to segue over to covering a part that i found could help me solve this problem okay so Let's see, this is my iPad and I've got a picture of this uh, brake booster assembly that was used in all these Mopars or Dodges between 1965 and 74. And I basically was Googling, you know, all different uh, brake booster configurations to try to find a very compact unit. And I ran across this and I did some investigation on it because if you look on the far right side you know you see the actuator and it's a low mounted actuator and then there's this rod and then it connects to the brake booster so i i thought you know you know mating that low mounted rod and then mating it to the camaro brake booster could solve the problem and the interesting thing about that unit is when Dodge offered power brakes in their cars you know back in the 60s 
they only had a single brake pedal with the single hole. Most other manufacturers would put two holes on their brake pedals, and because the brake pedals were, were mounted above, not below, the power brake hole would be an inch lower than the manual brake hole to give it just a tad more aggressive brake pedal ratio and it would work well with, with the power assist. So I, I ordered this kit figuring I could scavenge some of the parts and just get a good look at it so I can figure out how to adopt that theory to what I'm trying to do. So we're going to move over here and this is the actual part. Now these wood blocks are something that I added, but this is how it works. If you look carefully, you know, you can see, you can see that, you know, I only have to move the rod a little bit and the top, uh, you know, golden connector that would go to the master cylinder moves quite a bit more. And the math behind it is this, uh, the top moves about 60% more than the middle. And, you know, if you plug the brake, the brake ratios, you know, from the brake, from the tilt and brake pedal, you know, it, it starts at about 5.2 and goes up to 5.7. And it basically converts something in the fives to something in the threes, which is really ideal for power brakes. So what I decided to do is, is use the particular arm in the solution, uh, but because when you look at the Camaro brake booster, this is very long and it has this ring, I could have chopped it right here and, and threaded that and moved it on, but you know, from a safety standpoint, I don't know what that would do to impact my ability to pass safety inspection or just, you know, who knows what, what the, the ripple or side effect could be. So I, I decided to come up with the solution that would mount, uh, basically mount this bracket uh, to, the, to, to the brake booster and just move the mounting hole back. So I was doing this just to mock it up and then I would I would make this out of out of aluminum or, or remake it out of steel. So, you know, I basically had to drill a couple couple extra holes. I had to grind this out a little bit, and I was able to actually make it fit quite nice on the brake booster. Okay, and move that move that hole down, but. You know, when, when I mocked all this up, it just wasn't very stable. It sort of shifted a little bit when you hit the brakes and it just didn't feel solid. Uh, so I figured, you know what, let me, let me use a, a different approach, but still use this particular uh, lever, okay? So in essence, this is the theory behind my whole setup, which is using this lever. And if it turns out the lever doesn't give me the ideal pedal ratio, maybe uh, the, the brakes are too touchy or the, the pedal throw is a little bit too much for power brakes, I will simply, uh, you know, I can move the hole a bit up or down, you know, or I could just fab up something, something slightly different and change the ratio. It's just simple math, so it's pretty easy to do. All right, now we're going to segue to the parts I made to connect this slave pedal uh, to the pedal box and then to the to the brake booster okay okay so these are the parts that I fabricated uh, in order to connect everything together so this uh, big hunk of aluminum this is actually a three by two quarter inch thick uh, aluminum aluminum tube uh, basically the, the uh, slave lever or slave pedal will be attached here. This was notched out to clear the, the tip of the adjustable pedal. And then I also made an access hole to get a wrench so that we can put, we can put a bolt uh, to, you know, to attach it to the floor. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to weld in a, uh, a quarter inch thick uh, panel here 
So we'll have two bolts connecting it to the floor and then a bolt on each side connecting it to the front of the foot box. And that will be a rock solid. That'll be great. Uh, this is a, a new actuator rod that I fabbed up. Uh, because I'm using this with the adjustable pedal, I gave myself uh, five inches of, uh, or five different settings. This is my setting, so I could move the pedals back further into the foot box uh, or move them further towards the driver's seat by two inches. So it all works, uh, it all works pretty nicely together. Uh, these are some nylon spacers that I fabbed up and these plug into the brake pedal. So where that balance bar was, these get inserted. Uh, then I had to make a couple smaller, uh, smaller bushings. Uh, this one actually, actually fits in the Camaro, the Camaro uh, rod. Actually, this is the wrong one. Uh, there we go. So this is nice and, and now it fits nice and snug and nylon's a, a good plastic to use. It's slippery, prevents wear, and it works pretty good. Uh, so all these parts will connect up to the slave pedal and connect to, connect to the uh, master, well, the brake booster, not the master cylinder. Okay, so I'm going to segue. I'm gonna put all these parts on and then I'll show you how to, you know, how it all works together, okay? All right, so I've assembled everything and let's take a peek at some of the components. So, you know, down here where we used to have the balance bar, we now have a half inch steel shoulder bolt, the custom nylon bushings to hold it all together. And then we have the uh, slave brake pedal actuator rod and there's actually a nylon bushing in there as well. And then we use, you know, a lock nut to put it together. Uh, then we have, you know, the, the activator rod uh, with the multiple holes so we can slide the brake pedal back and forth. Uh, and then we have the original slave uh, brake pedal that comes with the uh, Dodge uh, brake pedal kit. And this part I uh, salvaged. Uh, also, the clevis pins I used as well, and I used that nylon bushing in there uh, to connect this rod to the Camaro master cylinder. Uh, and you can see that the way it, it's set, it's tilted back a little bit. So there's a there's about an inch and a quarter of throw to go from the to close the master cylinder totally. So you know you, you set it back a little bit and then it goes forward because it, it, it slightly uh, lowers the, the brake booster activator rod a little bit. So if you mounted it straight up, it would push it down more as it got to the end of its throw. So this is the way it, it should be done. And then you have the, uh, the mounting box that holds that activator rod and that thing is just rock solid. So. You know, and I've got a 10 millimeter shoulder bolt in there. So, you know, I think this uh, is gonna do the job. I think it looks pretty good. It looks clean. You know, it doesn't look like, uh, like a Frankenstein approach. I'll probably polish it all up and, and make it shiny so it matches the adjustable, you know, the adjustable pedal assembly. But all in all, it came out good. And, you know, pressing the, the brake pedal, you know, with your arm is not easy, but you know, when I put this on the floor and press it in with my foot, it feels really nice, feels really good. Okay, and let's see. We'll do one last segment and I'll show you what it looks like uh, by moving the pedals uh, closer to the driver so you can see how, how versatile that, that, that activator rod with the multiple holes is. Okay, so here we are, the uh, last segment of the video. And you can see that, you know, the brake pedals or the pedal assembly is now two inches closer to the driver. So I have basically two inches forward and two inches of rearward travel set up in this system uh, relative to where I think the pedals will be good for me. Uh, so it'll be nice to be able to accommodate other drivers 
and give them a chance to drive the uh, super light coupe. Uh, the other thing I'd like to show you is, let's see, a couple things. Uh, you know, this will be covered in a follow-on video. Uh, basically, you, you know, the, the radiators sort of come in at like a, a 55 degree angle, you know, so pretty, pretty close. But we do have enough room to get upgraded fans uh, and the radiator in front of the master cylinder. If it turns out this is in the way, I'll simply move that to the side and then I'll, I'll make a remote uh, reservoir attachment for the master cylinder. Uh, but all in all, you know, I think it's going to work. You know, you never know until you finally complete it. But so far it's looking good. And then let's take a peek at the chassis. So this will give you a sense for where this is going to mount. So, so I drew on the front of the foot box you know, where the master cylinder is going to go as of the current design. Now, I'm not going to mount this right away. I need to install the suspension, then install the body. The body dictates where the dashboard's going to go. I have to put the center console in, so that'll dictate sort of where the seats are going to go for the final fitment. And once I do that, then I'll install the master cylinder and the pedal assembly. Okay, so it's going to be a while, but I'm glad I was able to sort of check this off the list with all the fabrication and just know that, you know, one of the important things I wanted to add to the super light coupe was power brakes, and, and I believe this is going to do the job. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Take care.